Tom. Hi, Antara. <laughs> Hello, Tom. And Tara, we're back at beautiful St. Andrews Presbyterian in Belleville today um, to do a little research and learning and experimenting and hopefully showing a lot of people out there how important it is to have properly ventilated windows. The window we're going to undertake is directly above me. It's a, quite, a, quite an attractive window when you're on the inside. It has a lot of nice browns in it, and it's very unusual. The intent is, is to cover it in a Lexon material and show proper ventilation on how to preserve your stained glass, your brickwork above the window, and your woodwork, which is deteriorating quite badly on this window, which now has solid glass panels in it which are holding a lot of humidity and moisture between the stained glass and the glass panels. So, we'll get some scaffolding up and get working. Sounds good. What we got, Tom? Hi, Antara. Well, our scaffolding's up and we're directly in front of the window that you saw from the ground. And first thing we got to start out with is replacing a couple of screens so the windows can actually open for the church. Um, they'll nicely fit in, even though we're going to put the Lexon on the front and still allow some airflow up underneath the Lexon. More on that later. So, some of the things that we see here, Antara, Sorry about the beeper in the background, <laughs> it's an emergency vehicle. Some of the things we see here in Terra that have happened that we talked about on the ground level are the paint peeling off, all the dead material between the glass window and the stained glass window, and all of the rot going on and the putty falling off, and you know, it, it's, it's in extremely bad disrepair. It isn't going to take much for us to remove the putty and remove this covering and and replace it. As you can see some of them are actually even broken already. Um, the guys will scrape all the woodwork, sand it, prime it again properly, and repaint it. Um, that's about it for now. We'll come back again. All right. What you got there, Tom? Oh, and Tara, I have here the template you have to be for what the shape of the Lexon will look like that will be being installed on this window as the upper piece. Um, more on the whole subject later. All right. Good morning, Antara. Good morning, Tom. We're back at beautiful St. Andrew's Church in Belleville again today. We are. And we're, what, a day away from fall. <laughs> and you notice it by the everybody's dress this morning. It was cool. Uh, the, the boys are having a little fun up there. They're just putting up a template to make sure that the piece of Lexon that is going to go in the arch shape of the window, when we cut our Lexon, will fit. So we've made up a plywood template. Um, Lexon being as expensive as it is, you want to make sure that when you cut it once, you don't make a mistake and have a big cost and have to buy another piece. Anyway, that's about all for now. Hi, Tom. Morning, Ann Tara. Good morning. So, we're back at beautiful St. Andrews, and it feels more like winter this morning, and here it is only September the 29th. We're back today to fit the Lexon now on the window that we've prepared, and we're going to demonstrate how to get proper air circulation, ventilation, 
so that the frames stay much healthier, the bricks stay much healthier. It's just a just just all around better for our stained glass window as well. The lead doesn't get heated up in it from trapped heat between the original panels that existed and the stained glass window. More later. All right, what did we find, Tom? Hi, Antara. So. I want to talk about this interior because it, it's extremely important. We have all this lovely rotted wood here with inside this window frame, okay? And I, as you can see, I can just pull hunks of the wood right out of here mm. where it's rotted away. And how all that developed to happen like that, set back inside a whole brick step, is follow my finger in Tara. So notice all the masonry repair that's happened here over the years. We have some original stuff, but we have a lot of new masonry stuff that's been done here. If you follow my finger up the wall here, to right where the eave trough level is. Mm -hmm. Now I'm told by the congregation members, by the congregation members, sorry, that they've had this area repaired twice and neither time I discovered when we were doing all the roof work for them here had they bothered to fix the actual problem. They came and fixed the brickwork but didn't fix the problem and the problem was is that the water is getting behind the eave trough because there's actually no drip edge flashing. And a lot of people might say, what's a drip edge flashing? Well, a drip edge flashing is something that should be installed underneath your roof product to make sure that the water that's actually coming off the roof drips into the eave trough. And in this case, on this whole church building, it's the only place that there is not a drip edge for the moisture coming off the roof. And look at the deterioration of the bricks, the mortar, and all the way down here, three feet below, to this poor old beautiful stained glass window where it's got the frame just rotting right away from seeing all that moisture for all those years. Really unfortunate situation. Really unfortunate. Anyway, going back to our window, our guys have taken off this glass face that existed here which was protection for their stained glass windows and, and we're getting prepared now they're sanding it out and cleaning out everything and they're going to be painting they put some primer on some areas just to protect it from wet weather and we're getting prepared now to install the Lexon that will dramatically help this area particularly because it's going to allow some airflow into here but yet protect it and hopefully slow down the rot. Most people think you can stop rot. You can't stop this type of rot. Once it starts, this brown rot, and this is what it's referred to as brown rot, it just continues to rot. It doesn't stop. So unfortunately, somewhere in the next, I'm gonna estimate 30 years, this entire window will have to be removed and probably the frame rebuilt on it. Thanks, guys. Okay, we're inside. Hi again, Aunt Harris. So we're inside St. Andrew's Presbyterian in Belva. We're looking at the window that we've been working on from the outside. Um, pretty unique colors, eh? Uh, all those browns and stuff. We don't see a lot of full brown stained glass windows like that in this business. Um, the boys are just finishing up some Lexon installation from the outside. And I just wanted the, the audience to see what the window looked like from the inside. We are not doing any stained glass repairs to this window at this time, simply because it's a cost thing right now. The church is raising funds to do um, a fair large amount of work to the church again in the next few years. Why we're inside though, if Aunt Hera would follow me with the camera, This past weekend, this la the lath and plaster here in front of us fell off. This lath and plaster falling off from the ceiling 
in the corner where shoot sorry Tom continue yep this lath and plaster falling off from within the corner on the outside of the church where we were discussing the leak from not having any drip edge installed when the slate was installed on the church and having several brick repairs done and no one repairing the, the actual problem by installing a drip edge for that water flow coming off the roof of the church. So the water flow had continued to run in behind the brick and rot out the window frame as we showed earlier. And unfortunately, that moisture precipitated into the walls of the church even and has deteriorated some of the uh, horse hair lap that is on this ceiling. And I want to show everybody how heavy this lath is that's on the ceiling. It's three quarters of an inch thick. And these pieces on the back of the lath, which are actually the pieces that are shoved through the through our lath board, um, they're called keys. Um, appropriately named because that's literally what they do when you actually shove your 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 material whatever they were using for material and there's different products so I'm not uh, it tends to be almost more like concrete at, here at St. Andrews it's very heavy this little piece in my hand probably weighs five pounds so it takes a lot of strength of these keys being forced through when the material was laid um, to hold to the lath board, the, the, the separation of the lath board. Um, I don't know if you can see this with the camera on Tara, but you, here's, here's the actual hair within the lath material, much like we would use fiberglass nowadays for lots of things to strengthen up. They used um, a natural product, and in this case, hair. Now, sometimes I've been told they would use sheep's wool, cow hair, but horse hair was always kind of the traditional thing, but apparently many other sorts of things were used just the same as horse hair, horse hair to strengthen the actual material. Pretty heavy chunk though. Anyway, that's really unfortunate because not only did the company overlook that when they were repairing the brick, brick on the exterior the first time, and didn't bother to fix the problem and they had to come back and fix the brick again about 15 years later but this is now going to cost the church significantly more money for us to bring scaffolding in and scaffold up to that area and make sure that there isn't more lath that is going to just let go and fall down here into the church and possibly injure somebody really unfortunate, really, really unfortunate circumstance. Really unfortunate circumstance. Um, more later. Hi, Tom. Hi, Tara. So we're back outside again. The boys have put new trim around the window, bringing it out a bit further from the original interior window frame so that the piece of Lexon behind me will extend out past the lower piece of Lexon which fits up to where this cutout has been made. It allows a half inch gap or more between the sheets and it allows air circulation to come up from the bottom up into this chamber and circulate back out and allowing moisture condensation to never happen. And still, most important thing, protect this window from Rain, snow, vandalism, blah, 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 those sorts of good things. Um, we did not do any wood repairs to this window behind here that we showed earlier, how it had rotted out the frame. It's a later decision of the congregations on what they're going to do as far as that is concerned. Um, 
I can't think there's anything else I want to share right now. Is there anything you can think of in here that we haven't discussed? No, I think that's it. Good. We will, when we get back on the ground, show the gap where the airflow gets into this cavity to keep this window vented. Alrighty. Just Hello, Tom. Hi, Antara. So, we're at the bottom of our window that we've been working on. You can notice by the gloves I'm wearing today, it's just too cold to put the last coat of paint on. But, ah, this simple system that we've installed for protection, as well as ventilation, notice my hand will slide behind the Lexon to allow airflow into this cavity between the stained glass window. It still allows airflow in here as well for the screen that are in the bottoms of St. Andrew's windows so that airflow into the church or airflow out of the church by having this because it's as well has a separation in the top of this where the air can circulate. The one nice thing about this interior that most things are missed by a solid panel tight against the wall or tight against our brick, tight against our our plate on the bottom, whether it be concrete, aluminum, wood, whatever, is this allows condensation to leave this area. So often when guys come down here and they caulk the bottom of this and whatnot, we can go by in the wintertime and we see a huge amount of condensation collecting inside here. Because stained glass windows don't have no um, heat value quality as far as saving heat inside the church. So this is a piece of glass, there's a lot of heat transfers through them, uh, particularly because they're old. And um, that heat transfer, when this panel is solid here and no airflow, traps a lot of heat in there. And unfortunately, on the south side of a building like we are, it becomes a moisture riddled area and it rots out our wood. It rocks out masonry work. It, it's just a it's just a breakdown that occurs. We've only seen in the last 30 years too necessarily that we needed to cover our stained glass windows on our churches because more so for vandalism than anything else. They're so valuable. They're so costly to uh, reproduce that it's more productive to cover them and be able to enjoy them for future generations. So a couple of things that I want to point out, you'll notice because it's so cold, we were not able to apply another coat or two of paint along the bottom here and finish out the trim. One of the important things though I want to emphasize to everybody is how we fasten our Lexon on with. It's a simple three inch roofing screw, 3 16 Lexon, and on this eight foot sheet here, there's only five of them per row. We have three rows of them, two outside the center row, five per row. So if you can imagine now, in the future, when you want to do painting work on the inside of this area, how easy this is to get this Lexon off, scrape it, sand it, prep it again, paint it again, and we all know paint so side of building if we can get between seven and ten years out of it we've done really well. So we know we're going to need to remove this again, we're going to need to prep a window again, we're going to need to repaint it again. Whereas this is a solid fixture and I'm going to take our group to a couple of churches that have been done in the last year where this has been solidly applied with big honking, caulking holding it on the sides, holding it on the bottom and it's glass to boot you can't get back into that cavity any anywhere nearly as quickly as you can this. We can have this Lexon off in 10 minutes in order to get back in that cavity if it's been caulked and, and fastened in there so securely like that. It's a major, major job. And it's glass. It's very susceptible to breaking. Our new Lexon products, and I do rave about them because 10 years ago they didn't even have the quality of Lexon they have today. Now we have Lexon that will literally withstand 50 years of sun on it without fading. And mobile corporation warranties at that long even. So that's a bonus. Anyway, um, we will per continue at a couple of other churches where I want to show you about the non-ventilation system, the non-productive um, way to actually put on a covering that's easily removed.
See you soon. You talk and then I'll know you're ready. We're ready. Bye again, Antero. So, the boys have nicely installed the upper piece of Lexon in front of this uh, beautiful stained glass window here. And I brought everybody back up here again to show them. So the under sheet of Lexon, the long sheet that comes up and covers most of the body of the window, you can see it in behind there. And we have about a three inch overlap here. And the overlap is so any moisture that's running off the face of the upper sheet of Lexon passes by that overlap and just drips down. Here's the significant factor though, Antero. Can you see my baby finger up in between the two sheets? This is the airflow we talked about. We need that, that gap so that that air moving up through this system can actually circulate and allow air to go back out. And as well, it allows air to come in from the bottom. Now, it might seem, you know, kind of flimsy that Lexon, but it is extremely strong. We've used three inch roofing screws to secure it, so we're really into some good wood when we got a three inch screw. They also have a rubber cap on there too, and you'll notice that we don't have it tight against the Lexon, just simply so the Lexon can expand and contract a little bit and not crack, okay, because it will split itself, folks, if you have it too secured and don't allow it to move a little bit. It flexes with the heat. So that's our big deal, is that we get this air coming into this cavity in here. Because I want, I want you to get close to me, Antara, and have a look at the window that I'm pointing at through here. This window was covered solid with glass when we originally started out. And if you notice the actual copper work, this copper work is really tarnished. And it's tarnished because it saw so much moisture collection on it, as well as extreme heat temperatures between it and the glass, okay? And that's what causes it to break down. Um, the solder joints, solder can be melted under 200 degrees. So if you can imagine, sometimes within these window cavities, the temperature gets to 150, 160 degrees. And we've proven that by putting actual thermometers inside that and verifying that that fact happens. So those heat extremes, particularly in the wintertime when it gets quite warm, and then all of a sudden in the evening we get an extreme cool down, it's really hard on our copper and, letter and lead work, particularly on the outside of the window more so than the inner side because of that moisture buildup that's happening. So those are some of the things you might want to consider when you're thinking about ventilation. Where we're going to go next, and we're going to look at a church that was recently done in the last year, you're going to see, if you can imagine, an area about the size of the circle of, of my fingers where they've put in these little, what my former colleague, Peter Stokes, always called um, pressure release valves. And they have them situated in various spots around the, the glass that they use. The negative thing about these little pressure release valves is they don't create enough airflow. And they don't allow moisture to escape out the bottom because they are not in the bottom of the window where we need to get rid of condensation and moisture that collects in here. And not only that, it's surprisingly enough, even when the window seals solid, and I will show everyone later, the bugs that end up between the windows and the bees and the flies and everything else, they collect in the bottom, they hold moisture, they rot the wood sills in. So a lot of a lot of good things by allowing things to be able to get out the bottom of a window, okay? And it doesn't take, as you notice, a very big gap and it allows moisture, bugs, whatever might get inside that window cavity to get out. So. So the next stop will be at Port Hope Catholic Church where we're going to look at the windows that I was just just talking about that have got little round pressure release valves for vents in it. Thanks very much. Good morning, Tom. Morning, Ann Tara. And Tara, here we are this morning at Our Lady of Mercy Catholic Church in Port Hope, Ontario. And we're here to talk about window ventilation on st of stained glass windows. So let's just mosey over here and actually look at one of these windows up close. So 
So, and Tara, these windows on this particular church um, were recently overhauled in the last two and a half years and re-prepped again, okay, as far as um, sanding and scraping and priming and cleaning them up and had a new face put on them by a Toronto uh, stained glass contractor as well the interior windows whatever ones were deficient were rebuilt again but why we're here in Terra is we're here to talk about ventilation of stained glass windows and pluses and minuses of particular things that contractors are doing and one of the minuses about this particular style that this contractor did this is what my former colleague Peter Stokes always talked about was these tiny little vents here at the end of my finger you can see how small they actually are the depth space of this window from the stained glass window to the exterior covering which is glass is approximately six inches. This window is approximately 20 feet tall and it has eight, nine, pardon me, nine of those pressure release valves that when you figure in the screen within it and the actual size of the valve probably amounts to about the size of the end of your finger actually breathing per unit of those. But that's not the real negative thing here on Terra. The real negative thing is, is the fact that the, any moisture, any condensation and whatnot that forms with inside this window is permanently trapped in here because these pressure release valves don't allow circulation both directions within this window. All they basically do is allow warm air that's being trapped in there to freely escape so that it does not become almost a pressure hazard because it's because it is so tight that space you have to notice how the glass has been installed with this very heavy industrial caulking all the way around it holding it right directly onto the wood frame so the big negative about that Antara is is when you do have a buildup of moisture in here which happens usually every fall and spring depending upon you know varying weather conditions here in Canada um, you're going to have moisture build up in there so without a space in the bottom here for actually condensation to escape it sits in on our old wood sills and slowly rots them again and as you can see by the middle center post on this window this was extremely rotted out and the guys have just flogged caulking in it to fill the area around it. One of the really sad parts about the this style of insulation, installation of the exterior glass that's on this protecting the stained glass window is the time and energy it would take to remove this piece of glass because of this heavy caulking and take it away and then re-sand Reprime, recock, and repaint this interior space here, which is all wood. It's not a small job at all. And we all know a good paint job might last 10 years. So within 10 years, we need to somehow get this off. And that's a real negative for an application done the way it was done here. Because unfortunately, it's going to cost a lot of money and a lot of time to remove that quickly and easily it is not going to be quick and easy and that was one of the ideas behind what we came up with for putting on Lexon back nine years ago is to actually freely just fasten it with screws that you take out the approximately 12 screws out of a piece of Lexon that would cover this remove it in no more than half an hour go at prep the window and again get another eight to ten years out of a good paint job and whatnot. This particular method, this is not a productive method for future um, maintenance of a window at all. One of the other things I want to point out about this window, having been done so recently, the poor quality workmanship that was actually done here. This 
ledge underneath here, this wood ledge underneath here, was covered after after they completed this window with tin. And when you actually look inside the space, it's easily to tell why they covered it with tin is because the wood sill underneath is actually quite quite severely rotted. The problem with covering anything with tin, even as poorly done as this is, is you now have collect collection of condensation arriving in with inside this space because they've tried to make it tight by caulking it. And we have the same thing happening. Moisture lands in the exterior of here, it's warmer inside here, it's absorbed through into the rotting wood, and the wood continues to deteriorate. Um, but it's, it's really unfortunate to see this type of workmanship, given that it's only about two and a half years old now at the most. You'll notice that all the windows on this church were completed in the same way, in the same manner. Both this being the west side of the church and the east side of the church. Um, upon mine and Peter Stokes' arrival four years ago, we tried to explain to the, the congregation at that time how important it was to have proper ventilation of the windows. And it's interesting to see on this particular window here, the second one over, the little pressure release valve that's about three feet up. You can see the amount of condensation that's already been collecting around that pressure release valve by how dirty the glass is around it. So we know that there's moisture buildup inside there. The other issue is, if you ever want to clean this side of your stained glass window, how do you freely go about that? People would say, well, how often does it need cleaning? But it's amazing how lead, copper, lead and copper both break down and actually stain the glass on a stained glass window. And it's very difficult to get at it in this sort of application and clean the window. But the most important thing we're here for is, is just because we need to be doing things differently as far as ventilation of stained glass windows. And this is just one application that I have found that it just does not work. It does not provide the proper airflow. On windows like this, we have been at churches where the interior temperature between the stained glass and the glass covering has been more than 150 degrees plus. That's pretty extreme temperature with inside that space. Um, and it does no, no good for the stained glass. It does particularly no good for lead and the soldering joints where the lead meets. Both those are negatives.